Hi, welcome to our video on functions, and here we're going to talk about what a function really is, and again, the, the idea behind it. We're going to use an analogy to explain it, and then we're going to try some examples. So what is a function? Well, you might usually see something written like f of x equals something, like x plus 1. This is a function, and you should know right from the start that f of x is just another way of saying y. Right? So you might typically see something like this even before you look at functions as y equals x plus 1. So a function is like a relationship or an equation that relates different variables but it's a little bit more. You can think of a function like a machine, a factory machine or something to help understand what it's doing because a function is a relationship with a very specific role and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Here we have a video of peach growing and canning in Australia where the machine, or we can think of this as our function, when we give this machine energy, when we give it peaches, right, here the peaches are pouring down the chute and going up here, what does this machine do? Well, it sorts the peaches out, right, and it starts to make cans. It helps us to make the cans to sell on the market. And here you can see it says all damaged or faulty fruit is rejected. So in fact, it, you know, if you give it a faulty fruit, the function rejects it. So that machine has a very specific function. And here we can just kind of draw this out, right? So here's our machine. And it could be anything. It could be an unknown machine, or we can know what it is. That's the function f of x. In this case, it's a, it's a peach machine, right? I'll call it a peach machine, although I'm sure it has another name to it, right? This is a peach machine. And what happens is that when we give it an input, Right? When we give it peaches, when we give it energy, right? what does this thing do? What does the, the machine do? Well, it sorts out the peaches and it makes cans of peaches. So that's its function. And this is how we can think of functions in general as, as machines. So here it makes cans of peaches. And, and the key, really, as, as we'll look more and more into this, is that um, when you plug energy and peaches into this machine, you know or you can predict what it's going to make. It has a specific role. It's not as if you're going to plug in energy and peaches and you can get both peaches and, at the same time, a sweater, right? We know what the function of this machine is, so we call it a function. And um, just to get back to what we have in the beginning here, where f of x equals x plus 1, you could think of this equation in the same way. But the input that we plug into it are the x values. That's what our input is. And when we plug that input into our equation, it gives us a value or an output. So let's plug in, I don't know, x equals 3. When we plug x equals 3 into this function, what happens? Well, we're saying the function, we're looking at x when it's 3. And that equals 3 plus 1, which is 4. So f of 3 equals 4. So in this case, we plugged in 3, that was our input. This function spit out a value of 4. So at this point, especially if you're looking at functions for the first time, all we need to know is that basically what you're doing is a function has an input, a given input, and it spits out a specific output for any given input, right? Plug a number in, like 3 in input, and get in this um, function of 4. But if this is not really helping, we can look at graphs to kind of make sense of really what's happening here. So let's just look at some graphs of functions and we'll look at a graph of relation, which is not always necessarily a function, because a function, again, is a specific kind of relation here. So let me just try and get my horizontal line set up. I wish that this program had a line tool. There it is, okay. So we have x and y. Well, the function we just showed right, is f of x equals x plus 1. And we can graph this, and you should be familiar with how to do this, but if not, that's okay. Um, here, plug in values. Like If I plug 0 in to this function, I get 0 plus 1. So when at this function, when we have x is equal to 0, right, the y value, because y you can think of as f of x, those are interchangeable, is 1. So we have a point right there. If I plug in 1, what do I get? Well, 1 plus 1 is 2. So I'll have a point here at 2. Right? So 1, 2. If I plug in 2, I think you see what's happening, I get a 3. 
and here I'm going to have a, a linear relationship or a line. Draw us over here a little better. So a graph of this function would be a line, right? Just something like this. And that's a function. Because if you think about it, any x value I pick, right, if I pick a 1 or a 2, and I look at this line right here, I get a specific y value, and only one y value or one result for each given input. And that's the key to a function, that anything you plug into it, any input you give, it has to give a specific value on the, on, as a result. So I know I know with this function, for example, I plug in a 1, I get a 2. I know that if I plug in a 2, I get a 3. Um, and, you know, it is possible for a function, like let's say I, I plot, um, you know, the sine function or, or some type of sine function. Let me just do a sketch. All right, so here we have some type of, I don't know, sine function. All right, it's just a sloppy drawing, sorry. So this, you know, this sine function, we don't know the details of it, right? Um, but here, in a sine function, it's just a type of graph, you notice that if I plug a 2 in, let's say, right, I get a point at this height right here, which is whatever, maybe about 1, right, 1 and a half. So f of x is about 1 and a half, right? It's halfway between a 1 and a 2. Now, later on, some, at some other point on this function, I pick another unknown x value, right, and I get a point up here that equals, again, right, 1 and a half. And that's okay, that's still a function. Because why? Well, for any input here, I get a specific right, output. It doesn't matter if two of the same inputs give the same output. That's fine, just like with the, the peach machine. Right? I can plug in all different sorts of peach, peaches, and I'm still going to get a peach can in the end. But here, I plug in different x values. I could get the same f of x or output, the same y value. Right? This, this line is a parabola. Now, what's great about this, it's still a function, is because any x value I pick, like x equals 1, now the y value is down here. So f of x is something down there. If I pick x is 1 over here, I might get the same y value, but the point is the same. It's still a function, because any x value I pick, I only get one specific y value for that x value. But there are shapes that are not functions. Like if I draw this sideways curve. This is a relationship, right? But it's not a function. Why? Well, if I plug in 2 here into this relationship, there are two outputs for that one input. And that means we have something that's not a function, right? If you think about this relationship here, just pretend this is some other kind of machine. Here, if I plug the number 2 in, that's my input, I get two different results for that one input. And when that happens, you don't have a function. Right here, let's say this is something like f of x, or here the, the y value will equal, I don't know, negative 3. And maybe down here, y equals negative 8. Right, so you plug 2 into this relationship, you can get two different things. Nothing wrong with that, and we'll talk in later videos about why this is really important. But the idea is that there are many things that are not functions. And the key is to recognize, okay, if I plug an input in, I should only get one result. That's what a function is. Um, but that's, that's just a, a visual background. Let's let's move on. Now functions can be compounded, right? You, just like a computer, right? Inside a computer, there are let's say this is my computer right here. There are many different machines working and moving, and they all have different functions. And and together, when they compound each other, they can they can do different things. So there's all kinds of input going into the computer. And all the functions work together to create some kind of output. This analogy might work nicely, I think, for what's happening with, with functions. Now, with functions, you, you're not going to see computer parts in, in your math class, probably. Hopefully, one day you will. Um, we'll try to integrate a lot more application in the classroom. But what you might see is something like f of x, right, one function, equals 2x plus 4. And then... The other letters for functions that are typically used are like g's and h's. So g of x could equal another function. It could be anything. So you have two different functions, two different relationships. They might ask you two things. They might ask you, okay, what is g of f of x? And what is f of g of x? And all this means is that you're compounding one function on another. So here, g of f of x. Well, g g of x is 3x, and f of x is 
2x plus 4. And what we work on first is what's inside these parentheses here. First, we now analyze what is f of x. Well, that's just 2x plus 4. So this is really g of 2x plus 4. Right? We're compounding these functions. And what does that equal? We know that g of x equals 3 times x. And in general, what that means is whatever value is in here, any x value, in this case, it's an entire expression, we multiply it by 3. It's 3 times that, that value in there, right? That's all we're doing. So here we have a full expression, but it's still the same idea. We're going to multiply that whole thing by 3. And g of x, well, now we use the distributive property. It's 6x plus 12. So this equals 6x plus 12. But functions like this are not always commutative. Here, in this, we probably will get a different result. g of x, we evaluate that first, right? We start in the parentheses. That's 3x. And now we want to find f of 3x. And what's that? Well, f of x is 2x plus 4. And all that means is you take the input value here. This is your input. You double it, 2x, and then add 4. So here, our input is not x, but 3x. So it's 2 times 3x, right, plus 4. We're just plugging that variable in, just like we did here. So it's 2 times 3x, that's 6x, and then plus 4. Notice we got a different result, right, because the order does matter with, with functions. Um, now, now, this does have an analogy, since we were using that peach canning machine analogy before about compounding functions. Don't think this is a random process. So for example, again, first we have the, the machine, right, in the factory, and we're, we're inputting peaches into that machine. And what does this spit out? Well, it spits out cans of peaches, or jam, or whatever it does. But we can look at a lot more than just the machine in the factory, or just that one machine. We can look at the company as a whole, as a separate type of function. This company that's selling peaches, what happens? Well, when you put peaches into the machine and the machine makes cans of peaches, this company is getting cans of peaches. And then what does the company do? Well, they're going to sell those peaches. So they're going to get the cans of peaches from the machines and they're going to sell them for a profit. So this, this kind of thought where you start with a peach, you input it into the machine, you get a can of peaches, you take that can of peaches, plug it through the company machine, and then get a profit is analogous to the idea of compounding functions. Right, there are two functions here, and you can even write it like this. You can say, well, when we take the company right, as a function of the peach machine, right, what does that equal? What do we get? And the answer is profit. Here the idea is, of, okay, what do we get? with this function in here first. Just like when we did f of g of x or whatever, we looked at that function first. Well here, again, what does the peach machine give us? Oh, that gives us cans of peaches. Okay, and then the company now is using those cans of peaches. That's, that's the input. The input gets plugged into the company and we get a profit. So this whole process of looking at g of x and then applying f, the second function, compounding functions, that is can be thought of or represented by many different analogies. Here's one that I, you know, that I just tried to make up. I thought it was helpful. Now to kind of bring all of this together in a in a more concrete sense, all right? Let's say f of x equals two x squared plus three. So now this is our function machine f of x. Let's plug some numbers into it, like two and four. What is this function going to spit out? Well, the way you'd write this is f of 2, right? Because this number here, just like the variable up here, that is your input. So in this case, let's say we're plugging a 2 into this function. That's what this means, this notation. That would be equal to 2 times 2 squared plus 3. And that equals 2 times 4, which is 8, plus 3 is 11. So this is our output. So we added this input right here and we output it an 11 by plugging it into the function. If I plug a 4 in as my input, I would write f of 4. And that would equal 2 times 4 squared plus 3. And what's that? Well, it's 2 times 16, which is 32, plus 3 is 35. And that's the output there. So this is just a basic general overview of how functions might work. 
In compounding functions or whatever we're doing, just remember what's really important about functions is that for any input, anything you put into it, you should get one specific value. That's the key. Thanks.